<clears throat> All right, hello gang, thank you for joining me. Let's see if I have a... <clears throat> Gonna try to do uh, YouTube and Facebook both here. I have... Uh, YouTube is all up and running. Let's try to get Facebook going. Always a little bit more of an adventure. Yeah, not yet. And it's it's been a couple days since I did a broadcast. One more try here before I. <laughs> and I've got a very strange echo. You know that's 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 a new twist. All right, I'm going to proceed as if I have YouTube. Uh, f I mean, forgive me, as if I have uh, Facebook friends on. Hello, Arcana Root Route and Peachy3435, and Matt's Art Stuff, all three of you. Thanks for saying hi, appreciate it. All right, and let's get official. This is Daily Art Adventure, number 951. Can you even believe it? And I've called it, what? How to pack up a painting for shipping. Thanks, Ray, for the new clapper. Boy, it claps well. All right, now, first of all, let me show you the painting that I am shipping. This is, if you've watched me in the last week or two, that's bad lighting, but uh, this is um, Buddy's, Buddy's painting. I called it Roman Ruins. Um, and you can watch me do that, Daily Art Adventure, I think all the way back maybe to 934, 35, 36, up through 950. I don't mean every single one, but it's interspersed. Um, I like it quite a bit. It, Again, it looks better in person than it does probably on, on your screen. Uh, I made a couple tiny changes. I'll go ahead for those of you who watched me. Whoops, sorry. I added here in the roots. Oh, and I extended this mass down there. Anyway, little tiny things. And uh, let's talk about how I pack up. This is not the way to pack up paintings, as I'm sure you understand, but it's my favorite way, and it entails the use of uh, styrofoam insulation, and and this is the one and a half inch thick, because of course my, my painting is thick. If I were packaging up a painting that was on narrow stretcher bars, then I would buy the thin insulation. Does that make sense? Or um, at least one layer. So I've, I've done a whole, this was, this was, as if you can imagine, a four by eight foot sheet, by the way. <laughs> when I started this project this morning, I had the dining room table all to myself. But in the interim, the kids have started a game of Monopoly over here. So. I'll try not to disturb their <laughs> Monopoly game. Welcome to my dining room, by the way. I've, most of you have probably never seen it. My painting studio that, well, let's here, I'll turn you around for a second. So there's, there's the, the scene, the setting that you recognize fairly well. So once again, welcome to tour of a free tour of our house here. <laughs> so the first task was to cut out three pieces. The painting is 24 by 30, so I allowed for two extra inches on each dimension. So the styrofoam is cut out 28 by 34. I'm not, let me say that again. 24, no, no, no. I did that wrong. 24 by 36 Therefore, the styrofoam is 28 by 40. There we go, all right? And I cut out three pieces of it, and then the middle one, I cut a hole out of it, the exact size. You guys are gonna get a lot of squeaking, I hope. It doesn't drive somebody crazy. That's one of those sounds that could drive you crazy. So it sits in there just like that. Does that 
that makes sense? Let's zoom in here a little bit so you can really see what's going on. Fits in there nice and snug. And then as you can see, this piece is going to go on top. And that's essentially the, the size and the shape of the package. All right, but before we do that, we have to do something else. And that is we have to put a protective surface on top of this painting. And th th this may be the most important thing I say in this broadcast. So pay attention for a moment. Do not use bubble wrap. Do not use bubble wrap. This is newsprint, inert, you know, not, not, not likely to, oh, and look at that. It just happens that this is an accident, folks, I promise. This is serendipitous. I just had a pad of newsprint paper up in my, up in my office, and evidently it was 24 by 18 or something. So it just sits there perfect. I'm gonna put one more piece there just to give a little bit of padding. All right, uh, bubble wrap eats oil paint. That's important. <laughs> and by the way, as as is the case with with so much of what I show you on my broadcast, how do I know that bubble wrap eats oil paint? Good news this time. It was actually not my painting. <laughs> I am not a by any means a professional paint restorer, -er. <laughs> restorationist. But um, I'm pretty good at, I'm a tinkerer, I'm pretty good at figuring things out. I have a good intuition of how material materials behave. So I'm half-baked, you know, paint. I'm not advertising to restore your painting. But I've done, over the course of my career, I've done several. And uh, uh, somebody brought a painting to me one time that had been mailed from Europe in bubble wrap. And the bubble wrap had literally eaten. There was a chemical reaction between the plastic of the bubble wrap and the oil paint, and the bubble wrap had eaten into the oil paint. So that was quite the repair job. All right, so I'm assuming that what you see me doing here is quite intuitive, quite understand and understandable so far. Now, let's get a little bit, and some, some of this broadcast is gonna be kind of boring because the alternative is that I do the old Julia Child fade out, fade in. I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to wrap this thing up in stretch wrap. Da -da -da. There you go. That's the main, that's the main, well, I guess this is the secret ingredient and this is the other secret ingredient. But before I do that, it's just uh, quite a bit easier. I have here just some ordinary uh, nails and um, you I can push them through the styrofoam with my finger without any trouble. I, I've had trouble in the past sometimes pushing this, these nails through, through styrofoam, in which case I've just gotten any, any blunt tool, you know, the handle of a pair of scissors or anything whatsoever will do the job. So there I put one nail in each corner that will hold those two slices together. Now let's turn the whole thing over. And I'm going to repeat the operation. Please understand these nails are, are only temporary. They, I'm only counting on them. And by the way, I do not know why we're getting an echo. That is very strange. I hope it's not bothering you all. Let's see if I have any uh, monitor yet on my Facebook. I do not. That is very strange indeed. Let me give it one more try. I might be broadcasting on. Nope. Okay. Let's try it again. You can hear me, can't you? That is just strange, strange, strange. Oh, there we go. No, we, there we do not go. Forgive me for speaking too quickly. All right, sorry about that break, YouTube people. 
Again, I'm hoping four nails will do it on each side. I just need the nail. The nails are only temporary to help me hold this thing together while I wrap the stretch wrap around it. All right, there's a few comments over here. Arts Adventures with Ahmed Al Falasi. Al Falasi, hello, good to hear from you. <laughs> Peachy, my, it's my grandson Izzy who's just about to turn 10. He and got, got one of his, two of his sisters to play him in a game of Monopoly. Yes, I have watched Baumgartner. That is, that, that is absolutely fascinating. I, I love watching it. And it's, it's, uh, all right, so this is, stuff is called stretch wrap. You can buy it at pretty much any um, building supply store, maybe at a, a shipping store like a UPS store. And um, this operation would be considerably easier if I had a, an assistant, but I'm going to try to do it without an assistant. I have done it before. And I, I hope you can see, basic, once you get the first wrap, once you get it around one time, then it'll stick. And then you're, you're usually okay. And as you can see, I'm using the, the weight of the roll here. See, what I, does that make sense? So I'm just using the, the weight of this dispenser. So I can do this with one hand. I'm driving some of you crazy, no doubt, because you're looking at this lovely dining room table. <laughs> that comment right there is mostly facetious. The dining room table officially belongs to our daughter and her husband son-in-law who are living with us right now so this is officially their dining table so what the heck I don't care if I damage it <laughs> I'm totally kidding I'm just saying that to be provocative drive some of you crazy no 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 it it's a it's a hand-me-down from our daughter's mother-in-law our son's mother and um, we put it into this room a year or and a half ago or so with the promise that we would refinish it, which would, which will involve me. So we are, we're in fact going to paint it black. It will look really cool. I promise it sounds horrible, but trust me, it's not. So anyway, if this is, this is our table in its pre refinishing glory. <laughs> And its 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 glory is not very great. <laughs> that is to say, it's a fairly ugly table in its current condition. So that doesn't mean I don't want to put knife marks in it. But truly, I don't. But um, anyway, so please don't worry about our table. It's an old it's an old beater. After I refinish it with the help of my daughter, or my daughter refinishes it. With my help, I'm not sure which way that's going to go. She's she's a she's a good handyman. She's a good furniture refinisher. Uh, so it'll be a it'll be a joint project. Let me expand this. I know. I'm sorry, I got off camera there a little bit. So once again, I'm I'm still just basically using the the roll is on the floor now, which I'm finding works actually quite a bit better than on the table. This is essentially industrial strength saran wrap, right? This stretch wrap stuff. Understanding that saran wrap is a is a trademark name, you understand, but that's what many of us would just would call it. Um, that's probably good enough. Um, And I'm, I've just changed my mind. I'm going to do a little bit more. Going back the other way. 
So how many paintings have I shipped um, using this technique? Um, I don't know. I would guess 30 or 40, something like that. Not hundreds, but more than a couple. One of them all the way to Norway. And um, I'm always relieved, of course, when the client tells me that the painting arrived intact. I think that's good. You can just, of course, you can just rip this off with your, with your hand. It doesn't matter if it's pretty, but I'm going to make it the cut a little prettier today. Right? Stretch wrap. Available, again, at... I probably got this at Lowe's Home Improvement or Home Depot or something like that. You could order it online, of course. Now, you just want to make sure that the saran wrap is all pretty thoroughly stuck to itself, right? I have one more trick, one more step, which I think is pretty important. Um, I, I wouldn't want to ship it like this. I was saying I'm always happy when the client tells me the painting arrived safely. Uh, I think this is a pretty good, um, pretty dependable uh, engineering for sending a painting. But of course, there are no guarantees. I mean, you know, a forklift, <laughs> a fork, forklift fork could go right through that like nothing. And any other number of things could happen. This probably is the worst sounding broadcast I've ever done. And I do apologize. Okay, so that's one one loop of uh, Packaging tape. I'm going to do two on the on the sides. Oops, little mess up there, but that's all right. Ah! So the the concept of this packaging is essentially an exoskeleton, right? <laughs> you compare it to uh, something in nature. It's essentially a hard outside package. It's just one solution among many. All right, so I have, I have tape um, going around the outside this way. And you've seen the basic, I'll, I'll do a little bit more, but you don't necessarily need to watch the entire process once, once you've got the concept. Um, if you missed, let me get rid of the bad stuff here. If you missed the beginning, then let me just reiterate, do not use bubble wrap. Um, I use newsprint um, paper. On, on top of the painting. I've heard of some person, I won't say some people, but one person, who has covered the entire thing with packaging tape. That, that seems uh, that seems extreme to me. Certainly, it would be safer, no doubt, but it just seems seems extreme. I've never had any problem um, sending a painting. Uh, in this manner, with the exception, one exception, and that is um, 
FedEx uh, will not um, ensure your painting, our painting, my painting, unless we use unless we use their packaging. FedEx has indeed developed a cardboard box specifically for uh, shipping paintings. And I have looked at FedEx's cardboard box and and it's not bad catch catch my catch my hesitation their engineering i just ran out of tape by the way um so i'll, I'll stop there um, their engineering is not bad it's not as good as this but you can understand i can understand they don't want to that their rules are, if you don't use our packaging, you can't insure it uh, because, of course, they don't think that most people are going to be very good engineers. Um, I would think the same thing. Goodness knows what kind of outrageous, crappy packages they have seen for, for painting. So they just made a rule. Nope. So if you use FedEx, you have to buy one of their boxes, and their box costs $75 for a corrugated cardboard box um, plus, plus the shipping. So um, this system does not work well for FedEx. Uh, I trust this, I trust my engineering way better than the FedEx engineering. To just make that clear, I trust this way more than FedEx, but they won't, they won't let you insure it. So um, other than that, I've never had any uh, any reports of damage to any of the, whatever, however many it's been, 30 or 40 paintings that I've, that I've shipped this way. So that's it. Basically, um, I will um, put a, a mailing label here and cover the mailing label completely with packaging, completely with packaging tape. And uh, when, when this arrives at its destination, I'm assuming somebody's going to take a, a knife, a packaging knife, exacto knife, or sharp kitchen knife for all that and just slice through and it should come apart really really easily but you can see you know what what's protecting the painting is an inch and a half of styrofoam on each side plus the newsprint right on the paint itself and then the, the plastic so I feel like that's pretty safe I hope that's helpful for somebody let's see if there's any chats that are going on over here um, Yeah, Baumgartner is so much fun. The rest of you want to watch something fun, watch Baumgartner um, painting restoration. It really, it's, it's, to me, it's the kind of thing you can easily watch over your toes in bed when you're going to sleep because it's just zen-like, peaceful, slow, and just methodical. A lot of fun to watch. Hello, Aureli Barajas. Good to hear from you again. <laughs> Peachy, uh, feeling my pain about the dispensers. Um, bubble wrap artist. Oh my goodness, that's crazy. I have to look that up, Uncle. How fun. <laughs> yeah, peachy, $75. It may be more than that. It, it was close to 100 maybe, uh, for, for one of their boxes. Yeah, so they've got a racket going. All right, that's a nice short broadcast. <laughs> Good to good to hear, see you all, and um, I don't know if I'll be broadcasting. I'll, I I don't have much work. Send me a portrait if you want me to do a cheap four hundred fifty four hundred and forty five dollar portrait. Now, uh, still on the coronavirus special. Hope you all are well, and I'll talk to you again soon. I hope. Bye bye. Hello, Michael. Good. Glad you got that reading in real quick. All right. It looks like Facebook is working. Hello, Facebook. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.